There's been an outcry from veteran Tekken players on Tekken 8's input buffer. Many believe that the game doesn't feel quite right, at least compared to Tekken 7. But are these complaints valid? Is there really something going on? To figure that out, let's start by looking at Tekken 8's input buffer. The fighting game glossary defines the input buffer as a period of time where a fighting game will accept the input for an attack and will wait and apply it on the first possible frame. In other words, when you're stuck doing something else, your next input can be a bit early and it will still come out as soon as possible. In Tekken 8, attacks have an 8 frame input buffer, giving the player a 9 frame window to input the first possible attack. This also includes any attacks with a special motion assuming it can be buffered. Sidesteps have a 15 frame input buffer. So there's a very generous window to input up or down and a sidestep will occur right after. General movement options such as dash or sidewalk cannot be fully buffered. However, the first direction can be buffered, allowing you to dash or sidewalk immediately by precisely timing the second input after recovery. Advanced movement states, such as the crouch dash, cannot be buffered in any way. These advanced movement options are programmed to be unbufferable, requiring the player to fully recover before they can be accessed. This is why techniques such as the perfect electric wind godfist require frame-perfect timing. So how is Tekken 7 different? It isn't. Attacks have an 8-frame input buffer, sidesteps have a 15-frame input buffer, and other movement options all have the same buffer rules as Tekken 8. Nothing is different. So does this mean veteran Tekken players are wrong? Is it all in their heads? Well, not quite. While looking into this, I discovered that character animations have been slightly modified across the board. In an effort to promote whiff punishing, many attacks have received extra recovery frames. Some attacks even gain extra recovery only on whiff. To demonstrate, let's compare some of Feng's attacks between Tekken 7 and Tekken 8. Jab has identical frame data on hit, but has 2 extra frames of recovery on whiff. 1-2 has 2 extra frames of recovery, despite still being plus 8 on hit. 1-2 has 1 extra frame of recovery, even though it's still plus 8 on hit. Down 3 has 3 extra frames of recovery, even though it's still minus 17 on block. Back 1 has 2 extra frames of recovery only on whiff. Back turn down 4 has 9 extra frames of recovery, a universal nerf to the universal back turn low. Now a difference of a few frames may seem inconsequential, but to the established muscle memory of veteran Tekken players, minor adjustments can be extremely off-putting. Revisiting the original tweet, we can recreate the player's inputs exactly. And in Tekken 7? Feng successfully buffers his shoulder after his jab, but fails to do so in Tekken 8. Adding just 2 frames of recovery to Feng's 1-2 caused the player to miss a timing he was very familiar with. Also, keep in mind that these tiny changes to recovery also affects the player on defense. Feng's 1-2 used to apply 37 frames of hit stun, but now applies 40 frames of hit stun. So now, veteran Tekken players have to relearn timings on defense, on offense, and when their attacks whiff. This is why the input buffer feels wrong. Players can't rely on the timings they've spent years mastering and have to start all over again. On the bright side, the input buffer itself is perfectly intact and now it's just time for us to adapt.